Begin the process by setting up the guide rail. Place the rail along the edge you wish to dress, and place the gauge blocks on the rail, one near each end of the seam. Align the front edge of the gauge blocks with the edge of your seam. This can be either the edge of the stone or a tape line. The important thing here is that you align your stone or tape line with the front edge of the gauge blocks. The gauge blocks should not hang over and hook your slab. With the gauge blocks still in place, use the C-clamps to tighten down the guide rail at either end of the slab. Be sure to position the C-clamps at the back of the rail so that they don't get in the way of the seam phantom when you begin grinding. Once the guide rail is securely fastened to the slab, verify that the gauge blocks are still correctly aligned. If everything looks good, remove the gauge blocks and set them aside. Set up the seam phantom with the 2-inch cup wheel to perform the back grind. The new seam phantom SL3 system allows for quick, easy changing of grinding pads and cup wheels without the need for additional tools. If you're using the electric version, set the speed on the Makita to the highest setting, 5, for the cup wheel. The cup wheel works best if run at 10,000 RPM. Place the seam phantom on the guide rail and turn the adjustment knob counterclockwise until the cup wheel is no longer touching the slab. Start the water and the grinder and begin moving the seam phantom back and forth along the guide rail. Slowly turn the adjustment knob clockwise until the cup wheel begins grinding away at the slab. Use a smooth back and forth motion on the slab, turning the adjustment knob as needed to keep grinding away steadily at the slab. Be sure the seam phantom is at the left end of your seam when turning in the adjustment knob. This keeps the force of the grind going down and helps prevent chipping. Since the back grind is designed to leave a small gap on the finished seam, be sure to stop the cup wheel about a half inch short of what will be your front edge. How deep you grind into the slab is determined by where your seam will be. The goal is to have a small indentation and a rough surface on the background area for your epoxy to produce a strong bond when you glue your seams. When you are done back grinding, the edge of your slab should look something like this. To begin dressing the seam, replace the 2 inch cup wheel with the 60 or 150 grit turbo pad. If you are using the electric version, set the speed on the Makita to speed setting number 2 for the turbo pads. They are not to be used at higher speeds than 4000 RPM. Again, back off the adjustment screw until the turbo pad does not touch the seam when the seam phantom is on the guide rail. Begin dressing the seam while slowly turning the adjustment screw in to create a smooth, sharp seam. Continue this process with increasingly finer grit pads until all cutting chips are gone and only a sharp, clean edge remains. The seam phantom comes with three pads, 60, 150, and 300 grit. The grits you use will depend on the type or hardness of the stone, the roughness of the original cut, and how much material you need to remove. As you dress the seam, it's a good idea to stop periodically and check your progress. This will help ensure that you don't grind off too much material, that your edge is straight, and that any chips are successfully being removed. Your finished seam should look something like this. Check the final product with a straight edge or level to ensure that your seam is perfectly straight. Congratulations! You're on your way to giving your customers a better product than they ever thought possible.